Hey everyone, today I'm going to be testing out this EV Dance 40 amp portable EV charger. We'll get everything unboxed and take a look at all the components up close, then we'll test it out with my Kia EV6, check the charging speeds and temperatures, and we'll see how it does. So first we'll get everything out of the packaging here. It comes with a carrying case and is very well packaged. There's a manual. It comes with a holster for the J1772 connector, and it also lets you hang your cables, which is nice. Looking at the NEMA 1450 plug, it's about average. It's not one piece like I like to see, so there is a little gap where the cable comes in, but it should be fine. The controller comes with the mount, so if you do want to use it as your primary, you can. Then looking at the controller itself, it is a simple, small design, which I like in a portable charger. It does have a display, and it is adjustable, and you can set a time delay, so that's good. The back has various information about the charger itself, the meaning of the LEDs, warnings, that sort of thing. Looking at the J1772 connector, it has a dust cap, which is good. And it seems to work fine. The latch is fairly strong. It's not the highest quality I've seen, but it's also not horrible, so it should work fine. I'll show you here, the mount will stay on the wall and you'll just place the controller in the mount and it holds it up so it's not pulling down on the plug, which is good. I do like that it comes with that. Now let's measure the cables. So the cable to the J1772 connector is 16.8 millimeters. That is on the thinner side compared to what I normally see. And the cable to the NEMA 1450 plug is about the same. Again, thinner than I usually see. So we'll see if that impacts its temperatures during charging. Looking at the cable, we can see going to the NEMA 1450 plug, we have 9 gauge wiring rated for 105 degrees Celsius. And on the J1772 side, let me see if I can find it. It's kind of hard to read, but it is rated the same here. And that size is typical for a 40 amp charger. Now let's go ahead and mount it and we'll test it out. So I'm installing the mount first down low and then the holster up top. Then I'll plug it in and hang the cables. And there we go. It works pretty well. Now we'll go ahead and check out the settings on the controller. So you can see a variety of information on the display, which is good. And if you hold down the A button, you can adjust the amperage from 16 amps up to 40 amps. I'll go ahead and test it at 40 amps. Then you can hold down the time delay button and you can set a delay amount of time. Maybe if you want to take advantage of time of use rates, for example. But yeah, it seems to work well. Very simple and easy to use. Now let's test it out. That is a good connection there. Looking at the display, you can see it lists the voltage, amperage, and kilowatts, and how long it's been charging, and how much energy has been delivered, as well as the temperature.
Now looking inside the car here. Yes, the car is on. Yes, I have maintenance due soon. Okay, we are charging at 9.5 kilowatts, which is where it should be. I'll load up Car Scanner on my T-Box Plus too for more data. All right, and we can see we're charging at 40 amps and have been charging for two minutes and the charge port temperature is 69.8 degrees right now. And that's what we'll wanna watch. So I'll let it charge for an hour and we'll see how it does. Now I did get a new device to check temperatures. So I'll check the plug here. And the outlet. And we'll see how those temperatures change after about an hour of charging. Now we're coming up on an hour now. The charger shows 57 minutes of charging and we're still at 9.5 kilowatts. And it's at 116 degrees, which is pretty good for that amount of time. The plug temperature now is 57 degrees, not warm at all. And the outlet is basically the same. Now the inlet cable is about 54 degrees. And the cable to the car is about 75. So that is a little bit warmer, but not bad at all. And at the car, it's only 61 degrees. Now let's check the data. So 57 minutes in, the charge port temperature is only 147 degrees. Now, it is only 40 degrees outside, but still 147 degrees is a great number. I know a lot of people that have had their cars slow their charging speeds and freezing temperatures after an hour, and this is over 70 degrees below where it would throttle the speeds. So I'm very pleased with this. It seems to be working very well there. As for pricing, it is pretty inexpensive. On Amazon, it lists for $250, and there's a $50 coupon right now, so it's basically $200. It's also on their website for $250 before promo code TECHJEFF, which saves you 5%. Obviously, that's not going to save you quite as much as that $50 coupon on Amazon, but if you don't have an Amazon account, their website is also a good way to get a decent deal from them. Now, with that said, there is one big issue for the CV charger for me, and that's that it is not UL or ETL listed for electrical safety. So... For EV chargers, I really like to see those certifications to show that it has been tested to be safe. But it does have several safety protections built in. Hopefully, though, they'll get certifications soon. I know it's not cheap, which is probably why the charger is so inexpensive, but it's still good to have just to have them show that they have confidence in the product. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of this EV charger, and if you have any questions, let me know. If you liked the video, please hit that like button and be sure to subscribe for more videos. I have a lot on the way, including testing this EV charger with EV Dance's 40-foot J1772 extension cable. So anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.